Hey nerds, what's up? Today I wanted to talk about my stats and my year of 2019 in review looking at books. So I'm big into the statistics stuff and in 2019 I was using a bullet journal which I actually painted this myself so pat on the back to me. Um, also if you can't tell, I'm sick, sorry. Um, but I wanted to talk about all of the books that I read in 2019. I did really a lot of work, I think, um, keeping my shit together in this bullet journal. And in 2020, I'm going to actually be ditching the bullet journal and doing it differently. Um, and I will talk about that for a little bit at the very end of this video if you're interested on what I'm planning on doing for tracking and stuff my reading and everything in 2020 but in 2019 I used this so I had a uh, section in the front of it which had my pages I read, my books I read per month, my star ratings, my uh, demographics, my format, all of that um, genres and then I was keeping track of my TBR jar which I didn't do the last three months of the year as well as a series checklist that I had a list of that I wanted to try to get through and all of this is all of the year together and then I was doing that monthly and then adding it to this every month um, so with that said um, <clears throat> I also wanted to show you guys some of the stats are very nicely put together by Goodreads so I'm going to use that for some of it and then we'll just kind of put my stats and Goodreads stats together in this video. Looking at Goodreads first, um, I read a total of 36,598 pages this year and that was 90 books. Like 90, 90, 90 books. I've never read 90 books in a year that I know of, not since I've like been Looking at stats, I think I made 65 one year and that was a big deal and then I read 45. This year I set my Goodreads goal to 52 and I'm going to be doing the same in 2020 just because one book a week seems really doable. It doesn't seem hard but it doesn't seem easy either and so I think I'm doing well with that goal. The shortest book that I read this year was 146 pages and that was Saga Volume 8 which is a graphic novel. And then the longest book I read this year was 984 pages, and that was Kingdom of Ash. And I'm actually rereading the series this right now. I'm on Tower of Dawn, I haven't finished it yet, and so I will be reading Kingdom of Ash again in 2020. So I'm curious to see if it'll be my longest book of the year in 2020 as well. My average length of a book was 406 pages, so I definitely like those almost but not quite tomes. <laughs> the most popular book I read this year was Cinder by Marissa Meyer. 680,486 people have also read and reviewed it on Goodreads. And then my least popular book was The Hero Fan's Daughter by M.F. Sullivan, which was a book that I received in exchange for a review, and only 83 people have read that book. Uh, my average rating for 2019 was a 4.2, so I definitely had some good reading in this year. I also learned how to better rate books, though, and, and all entertainment this year. Um, Partway through the year, I really got to know how I actually like to... I'm curious to see what my average rating will be in 2020. One, because... I do feel like every year I learn more about what my taste is, so I feel like I don't pick up as many books that I probably won't like as I have in the past, and I feel like I get better at that every year, but I also feel like I'm learning how to really rate and not feel bad about necessarily rating things low. The highest rating bo rated book on Goodreads that I also read this year was Heartstopper Volume 2, which has a 4.68 average. I also gave uh, Heartstopper Volumes 1 and 2 high ratings. I think that these books are so cute and just lovable. Um, there's not really a whole lot of like negative thing to overcome in these books. It's kind of mostly just cute, um, which I think is why it gets such a high rating. And I will be making the worst books of 2019 and the best books of 2019 videos as well. Those are what's going to come next after this video. So you'll get to see more of what I thought in detail about some of these books I'm going to go through. But I kind of just wanted to go through this little page and kind of just like 
see what I think about all of these books that I read and how I'm feeling about them now. So the first review of the year was A List of Cages and spoiler alert this book will be on my worst books of 2019 list. Um, I didn't like it and I'm really sad that I started the year off with this book. I read it in New Orleans or I read it on the plane in to, to and from New Orleans I think but I didn't like it. And then I also read The Hero Fan's Daughter really early in the year which wasn't my favorite book. I finished Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass in 2019 as well. This was the first time that I had ever read it and then you'll see later that I started a reread as well in 2019. Me and Brittany from Brittany's Book Find are reading these books along with a few other awesome booktubers and we're live showing about them. So the last live show is for Kingdom of Ash and it'll be taking place in February on my channel in, in case you're interested. After I do and Empress of All Seasons, I remember enjoying them but I don't remember very much about them so they definitely weren't five stars. Emergency Contact was just okay. Tithe was a reread. That was one of my favorite books in high school and it was super disappointing. Daughter of Deep Silence was really surprisingly well done in my opinion. I did not think that I was going to freaking love this book, but when I read it, I loved it. And then Arch Enemies was something that I was highly anticipating and definitely loved. Summer of Salt was a reread. It started the Sassy Book Club for the year. Me and Chelsea read this book together and I absolutely freaking loved it. Under Rose Teated Skies was another one that I liked, but I don't really remember a lot of. Well, That Escalated Quickly was the first nonfiction memoir that I read in 2019, and definitely not my favorite of the year, but it was um, a good start. American Street was good, but I did have my issues with it. The Wife Between Us was such a letdown. The Poet X, I found a new favorite author. Turtles All the Way Down, I also did really love. John Green and I have a contentious relationship, and this one was one of the good ones. And then I followed that up with Hank Green's An Absolutely Remarkable Thing and absolutely freaking loved it, and if you haven't read it, you should. And then I also read Little and Lion for the Sassy Book Club. It was good. I finished my read of Saga Volumes 8 and 9, which is the end of the series for now, and my heart still has not recovered. Um, I was sent the last voyage of Poe Blythe and it was just, it was fine, it was not that great. <laughs> I found a new favorite author as well in Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. Absolutely loved it and I cannot wait to more, read more of his backlist. The Princess and the Fangirl is just a cute, adorable contemporary and it gives me some very big feels about going to VidCon. The Lies of Locke Lamora was another high fantasy and I think that I did myself a disservice by reading this on audiobook. I think I would have liked it better had I read it physically. I read another memoir which is always running by Luis J. Rodriguez and this is about LA gangs and I really enjoyed that as well. And then Autobiography was a book that I was so excited to read but I had waited and waited and waited and I did not get disappointed at all by it. I absolutely loved it. I also reread Daughter of Smoke and Bone this year and I freaking loved it. I did live shows with Katrina and read from Little Red Reader and Little Book Owl and we had a blast. I freaking love this series. It's one of my favorites of all time. I'm very glad I reread it. I also read Internment by Samira Ahmed and that one was also very good. I finally read Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I had been waiting, I had DNF'd this book quite a few times and finally read it and I ended up really liking it. And then I read a series of essays, Feminists Don't Wear Pink and Other Lies, Amazing Women on what the F word means to them, curated by Scarlett Curtis. This was good and I did give it a 5 out of 5 stars, but now having read more and more nonfiction as the year goes on, I don't think that this is the best book I've ever read. I finally started the Throne of Glass reread as I was talking about. I'm enjoying my rereads of these. I read Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson and was not that excited about it. I ended up being kind of frustrated by the ending, but that's okay. Hot Dog Girl, another one. It has a beautiful cover, but the inside is not as beautiful as the outside. Um, the Line Between by Tosca Lee was another book I got sent for for review and it was freaking fantastic. I absolutely loved it. King of Fools was another one that I read for review on NetGalley and although it is really good, Amanda Foodie's telling of the magic system I feel is a little bit convoluted and I wish that it was a little bit more clear how the magic works in it, but I really love the ambiance and the casino scene and all of that stuff that goes on with her stories. Four Dead Queens also was sent for in exchange for review and it was 
way good. It was a very nice, pleasant surprise. I finished my rereads of Dreams of God and Monsters, and I had a great time. Red, bright, and royal blue, like everybody else, I'm obsessed with it. It was fantastic. Cersei by Madeline Miller was disappointing. The Weight of the Stars was also just okay. Daisy Jones and the Six, I liked it a lot, but I think it could have been better. And, and given the amount of love that this series, this book gets, I just don't understand why it's that well loved. Like, I think it was good. I do not think it was that great, though. And then Aurora Rising was really a disappointment. Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff wrote Illuminate, and I freaking love that series. And I was really looking forward to yet another sci-fi duo story from them, but it just, it didn't hit the mark for me. Girls on the Verge, though, was really fantastic. We Are Here Forever was a weird little comic strip and it just, it was weird. I don't know if I even liked it or if I hated it. I don't know. <laughs> um, Ink Mistress was a fantasy and it was okay, but it definitely wasn't my favorite thing. Someday We Will Fly, I remember really liking it, but like I don't remember it. I keep thinking I didn't read it, <laughs> but I definitely did. The Gatekeeper's Sons was unfortunately a DNF for me. Sadie by Courtney Summers, I really loved it. I'm really sad that it's an open ending, but like, it's fine, I guess. <laughs> That's kind of all I have to say. Um, I'll Give You the Sun, one of my favorite books of the year. So spoiler alert for the faves coming best books of 2019. Um, I can't believe I waited five years to read this book. I really loved it. And then The Magicians on the opposite end of the spectrum was a DNF. The Book of Essie was a pleasant surprise. It's a book about a very religious family and one of the teen daughters gets pregnant in her teens. And this book was very good and hard to read at times. I really liked it. There's a lot of trigger warnings in that one though. Um, the Winner's Curse, everyone talks about, and so I finally picked it up. I got it from one of my TBR jars or some such, and it was just okay. Like, I don't understand why everyone's really all that obsessed with it. Like, it was good, but it wasn't that good. I read Heartstopper. Red Clogs by Lenny Zumas was one I was really anticipating, but, um, it's just really weird also. It's one of those that I also left going, did I like that or did I not like that? I don't really know. Um, I DNF'd the boys. Knots and Crosses was good, but... I don't remember a lot of details from it, so like, kind of forgettable, but I did really like it when I was reading it. Little Monsters was really good. Um, Yaya Sisterhood was a reread. I freaking love the Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. The Mediator was also a reread. I had a great time reading that. I continued on with the Lunar Chronicles series by reading Scarlet. Scarlet was not as good as Cinder, but it was good. And then I also read The Bride Test, which I was really nervous to read because I really did not like the Kiss Quotient. I honestly think that's a two-star book looking back, although I think I gave it three stars at the time. And The Bride Test was a pleasant surprise. I think it's more of like a three and a half star for me. Female of the Species, everyone's obsessed with, and I thought it was good, but I just still just, I sometimes I read these books and I'm like, it, was it really that good? Like, I don't think it was really that good. Like, it was good, but it wasn't. I don't know, a lot of people talk about that one. Same with The Priory of the Orange Tree. I feel like a lot of people talk this book up really high, but I feel like it was just good. It wasn't It wasn't phenomenal or anything. It was just good. Um, the Unhoneymooners, though, was a blast. I had fun reading that. Bad Romance, freaking fantastic. Queen of Air and Darkness. Honestly, I'm really glad that I finished a Cassie Clare series. And I don't know if I'm ready to start Chain of Gold. I know it's coming out this year, and I don't know if I'm ready to make that commitment. I also read Burned by Ellen Hopkins. Ellen Hopkins is always a good one to have. I feel like she really just knows how to hit you hard in the feels. I also read Thunderhead, the sequel to Scythe. It was amazing. <coughs> I think Thunderhead was even better than Scythe, honestly. I read The Bone Season for the first time by Samantha Shannon, so clearly I liked Samantha Shannon's writing because Priory of the Orange Tree was her, the first one that I had ever read. The Bone Season, I kind of felt the same thing with The Priory of the Orange Tree. It's a good story, but like almost muddy, like the plot or the magic or something is muddy and I'm not sure what it is. I feel like the book was a good setup for something to come, but like, I'm a little disappointed that the whole book is just a setup, if that makes sense. I also read Helter Skelter for the first time from start to finish, which is all about the Manson murders, and holy shit, that was a lot of information that I 
am intrigued by. It was fantastic. Very an, a very interesting read. I also read The Last True Poets of the Sea and I really loved it. I did have some issues with it so realistically I think I gave it 5 out of 5 stars but it's a 4 out of 5 stars for me. I did really like it. Ninth House. A disappointment. I, it was disappointing. Dark Dawn was good. I have things to say that are spoilers. I have things to say. I also read Fireborn for the first time. I got this in exchange for review and it was good. I'm very interested to read the next book. I read You Are a Badass, which was really fun. Another nonfiction book. With the Fire on High, Elizabeth Acevedo did it again. Freaking loved it. I wish you all the best by Mason Deaver. Freaking loved it. A Single Light by Tosca Lee is the sequel to The Line Between and it was great. Although I think the first one was better. The Poppy War. I just, I think it was good, don't get me wrong, it was a good story, but was it really as great as everyone's saying? I'm not sure. I have some thoughts. I don't think it's that great. I don't think it's as great as what people are saying, just like Ninth House. Whoops, sorry. I also read Girl, Wash Your Face, which is another nonfiction, and this one didn't hit quite as good for me personally. Um, she talks a lot about Christianity, which I'm not one, and she talks a lot about being a mother and what that means while being a working mom, which was interesting to read, but it just doesn't hit me yet, and I'm interested in reading this book again when one day I am a mother, um, because she uses that to like talk about her struggles a lot and I just don't obviously don't relate to it. I want to reread it basically. I also read Let Me Hear a Rhyme which was great. Um, I wish I knew more about 90s hip-hop and the whole hip-hop scene because I didn't know enough I think and that left me out of the story a little bit. Um, and then lastly I finished last night Becoming by Michelle Obama which was fucking fantastic. So those are the books that I read this year, all 90 of them. Like I said, I read 36,598 pages in those 90 books. The month I read the least books in was this December. I just did not read that much this month. I wrote it only four books. The month I read the most in was July where I read 14 books. My average sits at about six. I only read three one stars this year. I read two two stars this year. Like I said, this is like as I was doing it per month. So honestly, if I went back and really looked and tried to change my reviews, this might be a little bit inaccurate. But as of what it says, three one stars, two two stars, seven three stars, 32 four stars, and 33 five stars. So I had a great reading year. And then I read 25 adult books, 16 new adult books, and 39 young adult books. So not quite half and half, but I do think I'm doing pretty good there. I read only 21 physical books and 4 ebooks, 5 graphic novels, and then I read 49 audiobooks this year. So clearly if I wasn't listening to audiobooks, I wouldn't be reading. As far as genres go, I read... 13 high fantasies and 7 urban fantasies with 2 realis uh, magical realism books. I read 16 coming of age contemporaries and 11 thriller or mystery contemporaries, 4 romance contemporaries, and 1 dystopian. I read 4 historical fiction novels and 9 science fiction novels, 3 paranormals, and 7 nonfiction books. So I'd really like to read a little bit more nonfiction in the future. Looking at the series checklist that I made, I did not do as well as I was hoping. Out of the 21 series that I had listed here that I wanted to ideally finish in the year, I only finished two of them, The Dark Artifices and The Nevernight Chronicles. I have only one more book in the Court of Thorns and Roses series to finish, which is technically that little novella that everybody either loves or hates, so I don't know if I really need to count that. Um, I got halfway through the Lunar Chronicles. I only have one more book in the Scythe series. I'm halfway through Every Heart a Doorway, halfway through The Gentleman's Guide, halfway through Six of Crows. I've only read the first book in Stalking Jack the Ripper, in You, in Lifelike, An Ember in the Ashes, The Program, Across the Universe. Um, I haven't started the Cruel Prince series yet. I have read the first book in the Truth Witch books, the Children of Blood and Bone books. I did finish the Shadow Game, and I only read the first book in the Poppy War, and I haven't yet started the Red Rising series or the Sleeping Giants series. So, 
I'm not doing great in the series category, but I'm not that me messed up about it. It's fine. Um, and those are all the stats that I paid attention to and cared about in the year. Like I said, I'm not going to be doing it the same way in 2020. I decided I'm getting rid of my bullet journal. While it was fun and I did like it, I think that the way that I'm going to do it might be a better fit for me because I feel like, one, I wasn't doing this consistently throughout the month. I would like do all of it at the end of the month, so I feel like it was a little bit inconvenient and I just feel like this is better fit for me. So I pulled up Allie from Hardbag Hoarders um, spreadsheet that she made, which is very nice. It's a Google Sheet, so that's awesome too. And I'm going to be using her spreadsheets for the TBRs and the, the reads for the month and all of that stuff. And then for my like YouTube planning and everything, I'm going to be using the planner that I bought. Um, I was using a planner this year in 2019 as well. And so I just thought that like two things wasn't really necessary along with the monthly and the weekly setup like a normal planner. It also has a whole section of monthly to do's and notes, which I'm planning on using for for making a to-do list of videos and making notes for those videos and it also has a budget list for each month which is cool this planner is really awesome I do have a video on my second channel that's all about this planner and like how to stay organized and stuff so if you're interested in watching that you can go ahead and check that out but I really love this planner I'm very excited to try to utilize it more and all that so I will be doing a spreadsheet and then my planner instead of the bullet journal I think it's going to work better for me and that is everything for this video keep an eye out for my worst books and best books of 2019 those are going to be the next two videos you'll see on this channel I make videos every Thursday and Saturday so I will see you guys very soon with a new one and happy new year we are starting 2020 with some awesome content if I do say so myself I'm excited so I will see you guys very soon with a new video and I hope you will subscribe hit that like button if you enjoyed what were some of your stats you can let me know in the comments I'm always interested and how are you keeping organized in 2020 I also want to know that and all of my social media and everything is linked in the description if you want to follow me on any other platform and I'll see you guys very soon with a new one bye I love you guys